Uh, today I will tell you about uh, about uh, a project that we're uh, that we're running right now uh, on on the impact of AI in the workplace, and this is joint work with Peter Fisher, who is a professor of marketing in Paris, and uh, I'm a postdoctoral researcher at ETH Zurich. And this, there's an ongoing debate, right, that we've been all a part of. Uh, how is AI impacting the workplace? And uh, is it marginalizing? Is it empowering the employees? And in this context, we've already seen, even before the Gen AI wave, we've seen a lot of evidence uh, showing that AI can be beneficial. It can improve our, uh, it can improve, improve our ability to deal with complexity. It can improve productivity and our performance. Uh, there's also evidence showing that it could, uh, it could be detrimental. It could. Uh, lead to de-skilling, perhaps, and uh, dehumanization. So the question really is that we try to find an answer in, in the past research is who is benefiting from AI? Is it really the democratizing the opportunities for everyone? Uh, there is a lot of talk about this AI democratization, especially in the last two years. And the question, again, I've, I didn't even need to do a literature search. I could have just cited many of the talks that I've, that I've seen yesterday and today in talking about what does our prior experience, our level of expertise, our, our skills play in how much we benefit from AI. And there's already a lot of work uh, showing that lower skilled workers benefit more. There's other work showing that maybe it's the, it's the ones in the middle that are benefiting more from AI. And there's also research showing that your prior experience, if you have great, greater experience in a certain task, then you, you might benefit from, from AI more. So these are really the, the, the research questions that we have. Is the use of AI empowering you, leading you to derive more meaning from your work? So I'll explain why we focus on that key outcome. And as I said in the literature, there are, we see a lot of different impacts of AI, talking about fear of job loss, algorithmic aversion, and de-skilling de on one side, and also increased productivity, performance, and ab ability to deal with complexity on the other side. And the further question is who is more empowered, right? Is it the highly skilled workers, the novices, the ones in the middle? So we focus on empowerment through empowerment, the, the concept of empowerment through meaning found in work. This is a sub-dimension of, of empowerment. There are different dimensions uh, as conceptualized in the literature, like competence and impact. But we focus on meaning uh, because Increasingly, people are searching for more meaning in their work, and, and they're doing it for, for, to improve their self-perception, to, to experience their work as more intrinsically motivating. And on the organization side, this is, this is, this is nice as well, because they are seeking uh, employees that are driven by meaning in their work, because the literature says that they perform better, and they exhibit higher commitment to their organization. So the first thing that we did was to, was to look at this relationship between, between the, the proliferation of AI in the workplace and how that reflects on, on people's empowerment. So I'll use these terms interchangeably. Whenever I say empowerment, I mean meaning derived from work. So we, uh, we did a pre-registered online survey with uh, 120 uh, UK-based managers, and we measured the level of AI use in their company and we also measured their feeling of empowerment at work. And after controlling uh, for several company and individual level controls, we, we show that uh, the level of AI prol proliferation in, in, the, in, the, in the company is a significant predictor of, of empowerment. So this is in line with many of the, many of the findings in the literature so far. Uh, but the, fur the further question is, yeah, AI can be empowering, but for who? So the ne as a next step, we, we ran some qualitative interviews. This is an ongoing study. We've already ran six in-depth interviews with, with managers, again, based in, uh, based in Switzerland. And uh, we've already planned, scheduled some uh, for the next two weeks. And in total, we plan to have 25 in-depth interviews with managers. And it's, it's still a small sample size, but we already have some initial insights saying that the benefit that you get from AI it depends on on your skills, on, on your education, on, on, and importantly, your ability to assess the outcome, right? If, if you cannot really assess the quality of the outcome that you get from AI, this is useless, as uh, I'm, just, I'm just quoting uh, our participants. 
So building on this insight that, that these benefits, AI might have unequal benefits, we ran another pre-registered online survey, again with, with managers from, from the UK, and this time our hypothesis was, if you're more educated, you'll, you'll benefit more uh, from AI in, 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 the, in the sense that you'll, you'll derive more meaning from your work. So again, here we show uh, a similar effect. In, in, this, in this survey, we focused on individual AI usage rather than the proliferation of AI use in, a, in an organization. And, uh, and again, we measured empowerment and we also measured the quantitative skills of our participants. This was a self-rated measure. We simply asked them how, how, uh, how competent are you are in, in statistical analysis uh, and your quantitative skills in, in general. And, and, this is, and the, the results show that, again, the individual AI use here is a significant predictor of the meaning that people derive from their work. Uh, but we also saw, saw an interaction effect. And uh, in, the, in the continuous line there, we see that those who are uh, in the lower quantity, those who have lower quantitative skills, uh, they, the, the difference, the difference uh, when, they, when, they, when they use AI, they did not benefit significantly uh, higher in terms of deriving more meaning from their work. But on the, on the dashed line, we saw that those, are the, those with the higher quantitative skills, they, they benefited significantly from from using more AI in their work. So those with higher quantitative skills, we found uh, they were more empowered. So just, uh, it's, a, it's a small empirical package so far, but these are the key findings. Uh, so we see that AI has the potential to empower employees, but it might have some unequal benefits. And what we see here is that those with higher quantitative skills, they tend to derive more meaning from their work. And this brings us to, to, the, to the discussion on the importance of accessibility and, and education in, in AI. So in, in terms of accessibility, already in the last, last two years, right, we've, we've seen major advances. All these new tools are super easy to use. They, they're very accessible. Millions of people readily use it now. Uh, and for sure, this will, this will improve, I think, uh, very soon in all these tools that we're, that we're talking about, they will be even easier to use, they will be more transparent, they will be more accessible for everyone. But what we suggest is that this, uh, this too much accessibility is, might not necessarily be a good thing and it could, it, could be, it could be dangerous as well because people use it more without thinking about, without, without, without the ability to assess, assess the outputs and without the necessary skills to, to use these technologies effectively. So, so what we, what we suggest is to, to have the right education and the set of skills. We, we need to foster this kind of skills to, for, for, for the employees, for, for, for everyone to benefit from AI optimally. And so one way to do this was to just look at the quantitative skills of people. And obviously we, we only use a self-rated quantitative skills measure. Obviously the, the immediate next step is to, is to measure quantitative skills in a, in a standardized test task to make sure that uh, to, 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 see, to see the role of quantitative skills more clearly in how much we benefit from AI. But also, uh, and this is hopefully what I hope to get from you in the discussion, is what kind of skills do you think are important so that we can benefit more from AI? And uh, right now we're also considering some, uh, some of the 21st century skills. So we, uh, we believe your level of critical thinking and creativity as uh, could impact how much you benefit from, from AI. So this is all in the backdrop of, of the idea that uh, the benefits of AI should accrue across many people as, uh, to, should accrue to as many people as possible, uh, ideally to, to everyone. And, and a few words just about the future research. So what I presented so far is just is, is correlational and uh, we're already designing some experiments to to establish some, some causal effects. But we also, we're also really interested in defining or identifying these, these skills, right? In the, in the fireside chat yesterday, we talked about the skills mix. What is the skills mix that we have right now and we want to have? So ideally, we want to identify these skills that are needed for, for everyone to benefit more, benefit optimally from AI. And, and hopefully, we, we plan to 
design and test some educational interventions to, to make sure that we foster these skills in the workplace so that everyone can benefit from, from AI uh, equally. So that's it for me. Thank you very much for your attention. I would love to have some feedback. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, it's really nice to see qualitative research. I, as a qualitative researcher, I thought like I'd never see it here. So thank you for that. Um, second, I'm really curious in, about why you guys choose the dimension of uh, meaning in empowerment um, and not the other aspects such as satisfaction. Um, because I'm, I'm having a hard time deciding if that's the really most important factor um, when it comes to AI. So that's my first question. Second question is in terms of the qualitative interviews, how did you guys decide on um, your proposition and um, do you think that 25 is enough? Yeah, uh, for the first question, uh, I, I, I agree that we can, if we also talk about other dimensions of empowerment, they're also super relevant, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but uh, I feel like the, there, there's already more research on this, on, on how to, on AI reflecting on people's competence and, and their impact in their work. So we want to, to just explore this less research dimension. That, and also it's, again, yeah, uh, it's, it's an important aspect that, that we, we see in the literature that people more and more pay, pay attention to this aspect to find, their, find more meaning in their work. And uh, about the second question, uh, so, another moderator that I didn't present here, but we're we're exploring is the is the hierarchy level. So we try to recruit so far uh, managers of, of different levels, from the C level to uh, to people who have you know as low as only one person, the responsibility of only one person at least. So that's really a broad range of managers, right? And we also want to see the impact of of that in, in the. In the Future work, yeah. Um, so it seems to me that uh, part of this access to meaning comes from uh, autonomy. Uh, so are you the master of the technology or a servant? And the same for the organization. So what, does, what is the role that the organization is giving to this technology and your role also within that, that, that organization in uh, mastering it? Do you, do you have any insights into that? Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I guess it, it comes down to the many discussions that we had about, uh, about defining the role of, of how you use these tools and carving out a specific, specific place for them. And uh, I think that's, uh, yeah, the, and that's obviously the, this, this discussion that you raise is, is a part of this, right? It's an important fact in deciding how we, how we implement it and delineate uh, where it fits in our organization. So. Can you talk more about the type of industries there, these managers came from? And regarding democratization of AI, uh, what do you think it would look like in industries Industries that are not knowledge work-based, right? Like uh, in emerging economies or hospitality-based uh, or customer-based, but more leading to human interaction and not nothing to do with interacting with computers? Yeah, uh, I think already in the, in the, among the participants, it's a, it's a broad spectrum. And also in the, in the interviews, even if our sample size is very small right now, it's some of the managers are from really AI focused there. Some of them are producing AI, uh, gen AI products. And uh, so AI experts in a way. And some of them really have nothing to do. They, they say that they, they don't use AI or maybe they use it once a week. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think it, it really will depend on, on, on on the, on the industry type as well. We, we control for it in the, in the quantitative studies, uh, the industry type, uh, but uh, for sure the impact I think will be, will be quite different. But in that, uh, I think it, especially in the interviews, we get quite different insights about, uh, about the impact of AI because 
those who use it uh, daily in their work, uh, they have uh, uh, they they are really aware of the of the consequences because uh, whereas on the other other end of the spectrum, some people have uh, even yeah no idea about how to use these tools. So it's quite different problems that they're facing. And then about the second question, I think yeah again it's. The first step, I guess, so I talked about education and everything, improving the skills, but the first step is still the accessibility. So especially in the, in the, in the emerging markets, then it's, it's still a matter of accessibility. We need to improve that as much as possible so that they can, uh, so that they don't get left behind just because of this reason. But just the point is that after we make sure that it's accessible for everyone, we should also make sure that it's sustainable in the long run so that we develop these skills uh, the necessary skill set to benefit from AI more optimally. Okay, so, um, you know, as I listened to you in a lot of the talks yesterday and today, um, so much of it is about LLMs. And when we ask these questions, can AI help, you know, reduce the skill gap, do this, do that, who can perform better, how should we interface with them? We almost forget that this is, these answers are only in the context of cognitive work, like I think sort of relates to your question also, it's LLMs. And you know, AI, for instance, has a, has a huge history with robotics and replacing humans and physical work and farming and other things. And this is going to happen, right? This intersection of LLMs and embodied you know, robotics uh, and so forth. So I'm curious what you think about all of these answers will get completely disrupted because you know, for instance, like manufacturing and farming, machines, AI have displaced humans in a big way. And so these questions of who will be helped more or less, I don't know if any of these answers will hold true in a setting where it's now robotics, not cognitive, just knowledge work. Yeah. I mean, I think eventually, yeah, our, our, our research needs to have, need to deep down on this, on the specific industries and their specific characteristics, right? Uh, you're totally right in that the, the effects could be completely different in different contexts. So, I, yeah, I, I guess it's just it's just more specific research on 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 the industries and uh, tailored to their characteristics. I think hopefully with this kind of more generic research, we'll get to the specifics of the industries and uh, we'll learn more. But for now, you know, I, I absolutely agree that. It's easy. It's it's difficult to say something that might hold for, for so many different things. I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I. I mean. I. I don't know. Uh, I think. I think. Yeah. There's a. There's a distinction there that that. Uh, we. I mean. At least. At least in our definition, we don't take that into account. We just uh, have use a broad definition of AI, and it's really, especially in the interviews, we realize that this means very different things for for different people. For some, this is just an uh, algorithm that they use; they they don't even interact with. But for some others, it's it's really the core of their work. They uh, interact with in different modalities with really generic tools. So uh, there's also yeah, it's it's a broad spectrum there as well that we need to have uh, more specific. Yeah, uh, outlooks to, into these. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much.